Today we're going to talk about why your ex is flaunting their new relationship all over social media. Now unfortunately, this is something we see a lot of in our private Facebook support group. Now I'm of the opinion that there are four core reasons for why an ex would want to flaunt a relationship on social media. Now we're going to spend some time today going through each of the core reasons so you have a greater understanding of how they work. So let's just jump right into it. Core reason number one, flaunting equals attention. So I thought first we should start with a philosophical question about intent. What separates an ex flaunting a relationship on social media versus them simply making their relationship official? Well, let's take some real life situations and show you an example of flaunting. So let's say that you're posting a couple of photos or your ex is posting photos with their new person that are identical to all of the ones that you had together with them flaunting. Let's say that your ex is providing updates about taking the new person to a place that you always wanted to go to with them. Flaunting. Let's say that your ex never really used social media that much at all. At best, they'd maybe post once a month, yet now they're posting every single day. Flaunting. Now, as a general rule, Every photo, post, video, or quote that they post is specifically targeting you in some way. Usually it's flaunting. You're not usually flaunting if you're posting tasteful couple photos together with the new person that have nothing to do with mimicking photos that you had with your ex. Clicking the in relationship tag on Facebook is not considered flaunting. If they remain posting their updates, let's see, they posted every week and they're still posting every week. They posted once or twice a month. They're still posting once or twice a month. That's not flaunting. Now, as a general rule, every photo, post, video, or quote is more about the other person or life in general and in no way connects to you. That's how you can tell if it's not flaunting. Now, it's been my experience that folks who flaunt tend to be all about garnering your attention in some way. I mean, think about the mere act of flaunting. To flaunt a relationship specifically on social media implies that you are seeking attention from other people, from your ex, from your new partner. It's a sign of insecurity and a sense of unhappiness. Typically, happy people don't need to tell everyone how happy they are. They just are happy. But what could your ex want attention for? I think the motives of flaunting are a lot more sinister than most people would have you believe. And that leads us nicely to core reason number two, which is the vengeance mentality. Now put yourself in the shoes of someone wanting to flaunt a relationship in your face. There's a certain admission there. They want to show you how good they have it with this new person. They want to win the breakup. And how do you win a breakup? Well, by finding someone better than your ex, right? It harkens back to a much more primal need that exists in the human heart, a need for vengeance, to do unto others the wrongs that have been done unto you. And the great irony here is that most of the clients that we work with have been broken up with. They are the victims. Yet their exes claim that they themselves are the victims, which is selfish, but very on brand for someone who has to use anger to craft this false reality. Each of us is the hero of our own story, but relationships often force us to be our true selves. We can't hide ourselves. Maybe for a little bit at first you can, but eventually as time goes on, your true self comes out. And sometimes they force us to have a mirror up or shown into our face, and we don't always like having a mirror up and shown into our face. Here's my point. Many times an ex will feel that they have been wronged by you, even when they haven't. You made them hurt, so they'll flaunt a new relationship in your face to get back at you, to make you feel the hurt that they are feeling, which is actually very on brand for avoidance. And that's really core reason number three, which is understanding the avoidant relationship death wheel as it relates to rebounds. The vast majority of exes we've studied are admitted to have avoidant tendencies. Now, the avoidant aspect is an important piece of information to have because almost all avoidants fall victim to the same cycle, the same prison, basically the death wheel, the eight-part death wheel where they want someone to love them, they find someone, they have this honeymoon period, the troubles are over, then they notice some worrying things. Then they use those worrying things to think about leaving. Then they've decided to leave the relationship. Then they're so happy that they left. Then they start to feel lonely again. They start to feel sorry for themselves. Why can't I ever find the right person? And then they repeat. Around and around they go. Now, before I go into why this is relevant to flaunting relationships, I would like to read you a quote from one of my favorite websites regarding avoidant attachment styles, freetoattach.com. Once a breakup is enacted, the avoidant person might justify it to themselves and to others. 
central to the dismissive subconscious worldview is to expect partners to be too demanding and troublesome. So they will look out for anything that can justify this, regardless of how accurate it really is. So they really create this false reality. They're almost purposely looking for reasons to break up with you. Now that's important because of the tiny part of the wheel we like to refer to as stage three, which is I'm noticing some worrying things about my partner. Now, usually what happens is that they use those worrying things they begin to notice as an excuse for why the person they are dating is not the one. They're going to do this with you. They're going to do this with the next person they're with. They're going to do this with you again, usually if nothing has changed, if you get them back. It's an excuse for why the person they're dating is not the one. Of course, if you look at their past relationship history, that's why you tend to find all of their relationships always have some excuse for why it didn't work out. It's a perfect deactivating strategy to ensure that they don't ever have to get close to anyone. After all, avoidance, they have this perfect idea of a relationship, and it's one basically they can fawn over from afar without actually risk being hurt, without risking being present. Now, where it's relevant to our purposes is that they often use the worrying things to break up with you and then move on to the next person who they put right through this wheel again. But it's easy to get caught up in its own hype. Look at the second part of the wheel. Basically, I want someone to love me. Then they find someone. They feel like their troubles are over. It's the sunshine and roses portion. One where they get caught up in the hype of the honeymoon period. The part where they might actually believe that this new person is better than you because at first they are. Don't you see how easy it is to rub that feeling into your ex's face? Yet the irony here is it's a fleeting thing. With enough time, the honeymoon period of this rebound wears off. They find some worrying things and on and on it goes. And I'd actually say paying attention to how quickly your ex starts flaunting the new relationship in your face is an important consideration to make. Of course, there's one other core variation my team and I have noticed over the years with flaunting. It's a unique one, but it's an important one to talk about. And that's core reason number four, jealous slash no contact. Now, the no contact rule has been widely talked about throughout the history of this website. For reference, our official definition is as follows. The no contact refers to a period of time where you cut off all conceivable communication with an ex after a breakup. The intent of this tactic should not be used to make your ex miss you, but instead should be used to rebuild your own life so that you outgrow your ex. By doing this, the no contact rule can have the added benefit of making an ex miss you. No matter how you slice it, you will be using a no contact rule to take a break from your ex from anywhere between 21 to 45 days. Now, the results usually speak for themselves. Just take a look at our success story page on our website to see how successful it can be if you buy into it with our version. However, success isn't always linear and exes aren't always quiet. Sure, the majority of exes don't actually reach out to you during no contact, but the ones that do, oh boy, do they reach out to you. And when they encounter a wall of silence and returns, this just feeds into that theory of reactance. Now, in case you aren't familiar, the no contact rule revolves around a psychological theory called reactance. Now, reactance is an unpleasant motivational arousal that emerges when people experience a threat to or loss of their free behaviors. It serves as a motivator to restore one's freedom. So essentially, you're removing your ex's freedom of talking to you out of the equation. So here's my hypothesis. Sometimes in an effort to get your attention, factor number one, and as a way to get revenge, factor number two, they'll flaunt a new relationship as a way to get you to break no contact, factor number four. Their weapon of choice, jealousy. So I guess you could say that factor number four here is a combination of all the factors that came before it. One constant remains though, flaunting usually equates to a need for attention. Your ex wants your attention and they'll do anything to get it, even flaunting a rebound in front of your face.